What's up, everybody? It's Zach McCarley. I am bringing another Clydesdale training video to the YouTubes. Right here, I've got 235 on the bar. I believe I hit that for a strict press at 2, and then I did some jerks. Uh, I cut that video out just because this video is going to be long enough. Right there, we have 285 in kind of rapid succession. I'll talk to you a little bit about that and why I did that later. Next up we had 345. I think I iced myself a little bit between those two sets and I wasn't quite able to pop that up like I wanted to. You notice the dip was pretty shallow as well. So I think I racked it, came back out. Slightly better dip. Nailed it. Went for a second one, didn't get it. Right here I'm training for the well, I want you to notice the detail real quick. I'm doing farmer's walk with two kettlebells each hand. So, right there, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of, honestly, that was me being lazy. We have farmers, but uh, <laughs> I just didn't feel like loading them up. My back was kind of achy, so <laughs> I decided to do a big, long event that was going to trash it even more. That seems pretty smart. <laughs> but, so this is training for the the load kettlebell swing drag medley that's going to be at the Clydesdale Games. It hasn't quite been listed exactly what it's going to be, but what I did was a farmer's walk for 50 feet and then kettlebell swing, stone for 50 feet, kettlebell swing, keg for 50 feet, kettlebell swing, stone, kettlebell swing, keg, kettlebell swing, drag. Um, I was supposed to do a run in between each carry and kettlebell swing but I forgot to do that the first two and I believe I recognize that right here which is why I went to the keg and then I was like oh crap I forgot to run so I decided to jog it out a little bit so the reason like why you know you might be asking yourself why would I be running between these well that is all about the details it's the same reason why I was trying to press that 385 in rapid succession um, I believe that's the way it's going to be at the contest and because of that I'm using it in my contest prep. You should always be looking for ways to mimic the contest more realistically. That's why hometown guys have such an advantage. Say a contest was going to take place in you know Florida and there are guys from Florida, well of course they're going to have an advantage not only in time, being used to the time zone, being used to the climate, being uh, you know not dried out from flight, being perfectly nourished if they weren't cutting, but you know, they have a whole lot of things going for them, but the biggest thing I believe that uh, hometown guys have going for them is they have equipment that they're used to handling and they know little, you know, they know little tips about and you really need to minimize the disadvantage when you go to a different contest. You need to train a bunch of different ways. You need to be ready for just about anything. And you need to take out a lot of the variables that could show up that might basically come up and bite you in the ass later. <clears throat> so enough of that. I'd like to talk a little bit about something that came up on Facebook not too long ago. Uh, strength Crew asked me if I could have one piece of equipment, what would it be? And I led that response by saying, you're never going to have to worry about only having one piece of equipment because for strongman, anything can be a piece of equipment. You can, you can, you know, go to the beach or go to, you know, a river and find a big rock and hey there's your husa vault you know what I mean or hey there's an overhead pressing rock or there's a loading rock you know you don't you don't have to limit yourself you're you're only about as limited as your imagination this keg that I'm carrying right there was actually um, it was just actually one of my friends had a keg that they it emptied and I was like, hey, what are you going to do with that? And they're like, oh, I'm probably just going to bring it back for the deposit. I said, how much is the deposit? They said, $20. I said, oh, I'll pay you $25 for it. And they're like, sounds like a good deal. So I paid $25 for that keg and it's coming handy. You know, I'm using it in my training. And that's just one example. <clears throat> so you're never going to have to worry about one piece of equipment. But if I could only have one piece of equipment, I, I said that I'd have the yoke. 
because that is a very difficult event to mimic and on top of that it has a lot of purposes. You can use it as a pressing implement, you can use it as something to load things over, you can use it for its intended purpose, the yoke. You know, it has multiple purposes. And this video is wrapping up. I didn't exactly talk about everything I wanted to, but next time I'll be talking to you about uh, a little bit about loving what you do, uh, taking time off myofascial release, and that fun stuff. Catch you guys next time. Hey, what's up? I just finished the workout. I'm here with Allison Pedersen. You can subscribe to her channel right here. I'm gonna put a link. Um, had a decent workout, you know. It was, I got a little bit confused midway through and started like changing things up but it's been a long week and you know, that's the way it goes sometimes so I'm here at Utopia frozen yogurt first time I'll be trying it out so I'll let you know what I think of it I'll get a little bit of video on there and you can check it out for yourself mm, mm, yummy. what'd you get Ali? everything tell them what you got you got chocolate what else? Chocolate, mint, strawberries, and maraschino cherries. I guess that's what you eat if you want a 280 pound deadlift or whatever, you know? I got some huckleberry and some pomegranate raspberry with a whole lot of mint and chocolate peanut butter. Chocolate peanut butter swirl. Delicious.